Hello everyone, this is Dr. Mary Newport coming to you from Spring Hill, Florida. Um, today I'm going to be talking about ketones. What else would we talk about? Um, I will, um, as people are getting on, um, I have been traveling a lot. So uh, in my most recent set of adventures, um, I've been to Japan, I've been to um, uh, Orlando, Florida, not far from where I live. And uh, most recently, I got to visit Prague in Czechoslovakia, which was just an amazing trip. It's a beautiful place to be. Um, and I, I'm going to be going to London soon and some other exciting places. So um, I'm happy to be home at the moment <laughs> and uh, online today uh, to talk to you about ketones. Um, I think many of you know me, uh, but there are a lot of people who don't know me. Um, so I will tell you about myself and how I got interested in ketones. So uh, I'm a physician. I am uh, by training a neonatologist, which is a doctor who takes care of sick and premature newborns. So I spent 30 years in Florida working as a neonatologist in newborn intensive care units. And then I did uh, worked as um, in hospice care for about three years. Uh, my husband, Stephen, uh, because of him, really. Um, so how did I get interested in ketones? Well, this goes back to 2008. And um, my husband, Steve, had early onset Alzheimer's disease. And uh, it's, it's just a horrible thing. He worked at home doing accounting for my medical practice so that he could be there for our children when I had to run out for emergencies. And he was a fantastic accountant. Um, he was uh, very particular. He made very complicated uh, but letter-perfect forms. He wasn't happy unless his work was perfect. And But some things started happening when he was only 51 years old. He began making payroll mistakes, procrastinating, and um, something was wrong. And we thought it was, at first, depression. That's what his doctor diagnosed, because you can have memory problems with depression. But this continued to get worse and worse. Um, and about you know three years after those very first symptoms, he was officially diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. And as you can imagine, uh, that was tragic. He was only 54, and we always thought we'd live to a ripe old age together and get to retire and travel. And fortunately, we did get to travel a lot um, with our children, you know, for many years. So at least we did get to do that and um, didn't have to wait till we retired. But, um, you know, Steve was diagnosed with Alzheimer's when he was 54, and when he was 58, he was really on a downward spiral. Um, he had uh, not been able to drive for about two years. He couldn't even use a calculator or add one plus one is, or two and get, you know, even write down um, simple words. Uh, he would misspell the, the tiniest word. And so, uh, you know, things were not looking good. And the average lifespan for somebody with Alzheimer's is about seven years after diagnosis. So we were extremely worried. Um, Steve was well aware that he had a problem and he knew what he could do and what he could no longer do. And so we were trying to get him into a couple of clinical trials. There were uh, two different drugs that he had a chance to be part of their clinical trial. And he was scheduled um, two days in a row for screenings for these. And I was looking up the night before the first screening, the risks and benefits of these two different drugs. And I happened on a press release about a medical food that was in development. It was uh, seeking recognition by the FDA. And it turned out that was still another year off. But when people consume this medical food, even just one dose, nearly half of the people who took it with Alzheimer's had improvement in their memory and cognition. And so it didn't really say what it was or what it did. So I started doing some more internet research and I found a patent application of theirs online. And it explained uh, this uh, and concept of Alzheimer's disease as a type of diabetes of the brain. There's a problem of getting glucose into brain cells in Alzheimer's and um, it spreads, it gets worse 
and spreads throughout the brain uh, throughout through the various stages of the disease. And so it talked about ketones as an alternative fuel for the brain. And that was really the first time I had ever heard of that concept. And um, I was fascinated by it. And um, what I learned was from their patent application was that the medical food was medium chain triglyceride oil. And this is a special oil. It's not in your everyday oils like soybean oil or the usual vegetable oils or even olive oil or fish oil. Um, it actually, uh, I learned from the patent application, comes from coconut oil. And sometimes it's extracted from palm kernel oil. So um, it was uh, a light, you know, light bulb came on at that point. Um, I was familiar with MCT oil or medium chain triglyceride oil because of my job. I'm a neonatologist and we used to add uh, MCT oil or medium chain triglyceride oil to the feedings of our very tiny premature babies. Uh, the babies who were around two pounds or, and under, we would add a little bit to each feeding and they would grow faster. They absorbed it very well. Um, but I, I really didn't know about this ketone effect. Uh, so what happens with MCT oil is when you consume it, part of it, it, it's taken to the liver and part of it is converted to ketones and the rest of it is released as medium chain triglycerides that um, are used immediately as energy. They're not stored as fat. So uh, this is a very interesting oil. Um, it doesn't require uh, much in the way of digestive enzymes for that to happen like other fats do. And um, it's been shown to um, be thermogenic, which means it raises your, uh, your basal metabolic rate. It raises your body temperature and you actually burn more calories over the course of a day um, taking MCT oil, some studies have shown. So it's been used for many years for weight loss and it's also been used by uh, bodybuilders to help um, increase their lean body mass, their muscle mass. Uh, so that, that's really had been the main use for decades. Um, but back around 2000, Dr. Richard Veach at the NIH, who was a world expert on ketones, had published his study in which they looked at uh, cultures of neurons, these are brain cells, that um, were exposed to either a toxin that causes Alzheimer's disease or a toxin that causes Parkinson's disease. And to some of the cultures, they added ketones, the ketone beta-hydroxybutyrate, which are in the ketone salts. And to the uh, other cultures, they did not add the ketones. And what they found is that there were many more neurons that survived in the cultures that had beta-hydroxybutyrate, the ketone. So he published this and um, that, you know, basically uh, reporting that ketone bodies, uh, specifically beta-hydroxybutyrate, appears to be neuroprotective. It, it uh, appears to act as an alternative fuel to the brain and possibly have other neuroprotective properties. So um, I, I was extremely intrigued by this and I did remember uh, some information about MCT oil and about ketones you know, from medical school. Um, one of the things I remembered is that when you are fasting for a long period of time that you uh, start breaking down fat and some of that fat is converted to ketones and your brain will easily switch over from using glucose to ketones during that um, that situation, you know, where you um, haven't really eaten for uh, several days. And then the ketogenic diet is another um, uh, way that kind of mimics starvation uh, that causes fat to break down and part of it is converted to ketones. Uh, it's been used for childhood epilepsy for almost 100 years. In um, 1921, it, this was discovered and reported that if you eat a very high fat diet with minimal carbohydrates or sugars, um, that this will uh, mimic starvation. And uh, so it was found that this helped children with epilepsy who had severe seizures that um, weren't responding to other treatments. And uh, some children completely stop having seizures. And we're talking about, you know, children who sometimes will have up to uh, 100 seizures a day. 
uh, that they'll sometimes completely stop and in another portion of children, you know, greatly reduce from 50, you know, by 50 or 90 percent the number of seizures that they have. And more recently, adults have found this too, that uh, some adults have benefited from this that aren't responding to any convulsive medications or anti-seizure medications. So um, this made complete scientific sense to me. And so um, when I learned in this patent application that MCT was extracted from coconut oil, I knew I had seen that on the shelf. And I thought, hmm, maybe this will help my husband. So what uh, we had to, this was like 1 a.m. on a Friday night, and you know, the next morning I had, um, we, he was scheduled at 9 a.m., so I really didn't have time to do anything about it at that point. So we ended up having a day before and a day after of testing before and after he started taking coconut oil. So um, that first screening without the coconut oil, he actually did very poorly. He um, needed to pass um, a mini mental status exam, get a score of at least 16 out of 30 points. And he got only uh, 14 points that day. And we were extremely disappointed because this, you know, these drugs seem like our, our last hope. And the doctor asked him to draw a clock and he drew just a few little circles. They weren't organized at all like a clock and four numbers, um, just kind of randomly on the page. And she told me that he was on the verge of severe Alzheimer's. Um, I kind of had a gut feeling, but I didn't realize it was quite that bad. I was just really taken aback when I saw that score. And um, so I thought, what do we have to lose? I'm gonna go pick up some coconut oil. And when we got home, I, I looked up the um, fatty acid composition of coconut oil and um, reminded myself which were the medium chain triglycerides. And I calculated how much coconut oil he would need to take to equal uh, the amount of MCT oil that, that they were using in the, the studies with the medical food. And so I gave Steve the next morning that much coconut oil, which turned out to be a little over two tablespoons. Uh, we put it in some oatmeal because of coconut oil tends to be a little solid at room temperature. And um, he was tested three hours later. And this time he gained four whole points which qualified him for the study. And he remembered we were in a completely different town. And he remembered what town he was in, what floor he was in on the, um, the building that we were in, which he didn't remember the day before at the other place. And he remembered the day of the week and the season, which he also couldn't remember the day before. So um, we were ecstatic. And you know, I didn't really know right away if it was the coconut oil that had done it, but decided to keep it going. And so, Really, the next day, I, I just started adding measured doses every morning of um, a little over two tablespoons of coconut oil, and then we just started cooking with it and using it in other meals. So fairly quickly ramped up how much he was taking. And then um, I started talking to Dr. Richard Veach at the NIH, um, who at first was you know, really uh, skeptical that coconut oil could help somebody with Alzheimer's. But two weeks later, Steve drew a clock, and this time it was a full circle. It had all the numbers around it in the right order, and it was pretty messy. It had a lot of extra, like a whole bunch of hands of the clock, but it was a huge improvement, and he was just uh, really astounded, and he called me back, and he started sending me articles about ketones and his work, um, and this was really the first I had heard of all of this, you know, uh, um, and my process of learning about ketones. So. You know, Steve had just a, a number of other improvements uh, fairly quickly. Uh, he was much more energetic and talkative and able to do things in the morning, like uh, getting water from the refrigerator and finding the right utensil in the drawer and things like that. And um, he said it was like the light bulb came on in his head the first time he took coconut oil. And his depression lifted fairly quickly. And he, um, you know, he said he had hope for the future. He felt like he had a future again, and and his mood just drastically changed. Um, so uh, he continued to improve uh, over about a nine or ten month period. Um, he at, at three or four months he he uh, be, was able to read again, and he explained that the words had been shaking around on the page. It was like a tremor in his eye, and that this stopped after uh, about three or four months. 
and uh, then he was able to read, but comprehension was an issue. However, by about nine or 10 months, he started remembering, comprehending, and actually remembering what he had read several hours earlier and would tell me about it. So um, it was really profound, you know, what happened with Steve. And um, he leveled off uh, for a couple years. Um, he, uh, he actually was the, the beneficiary of Dr. Richard Beach's ketone ester. Uh, about two years after starting coconut oil, he started to have um, uh, some setbacks, and, and it seemed to be related to a clinical trial that he was in. Um, and he had been on this particular drug for five to seven months, we learned later, and he, we found out that it actually accelerated Alzheimer's disease. It was, it was discontinued, the trial, and Ironically, coconut oil helped him get into that trial, but it, it kept him, you know, the medication may have done more harm than good. And um, so, uh, but he had a, a major turnaround again, you know, when he started the ketone ester. So with that, you can get much higher levels with, um, than with uh, MCT oil. And guess what this ketone ester is? It's beta hydroxybutyrate, the ketone body that uh, was shown to be neuroprotective. And it's when you're starving or fasting, um, this ketone body goes from almost zero to um, what uh, five millimoles or so. Um, that might not mean anything to you, but with MCT oil, it's closer to 0.5 millimoles if you're not on a ketogenic diet. So 10 times higher. And um, so the ketone prove it's uh, salts the uh, Prove It Ketone Salts, Keto OS and uh, Keto Max, actually contain beta-hydroxybutyrate. So these are really the first widely marketed product, you know, marketed to the public that contains the ketone body beta-hydroxybutyrate. And it does provide instant ketosis. You can quickly get into ketosis uh, within, you know, 15 to 30 minutes, the level will rise. Um, it is more measurable if you take Keto Max, and it, it might possibly be um, more uh, effective uh, by taking Keto Max, which contains um, one, you know, there are two forms of beta hydroxybutyrate, and the one in Keto Max is the one that is circulating in the body and is probably more active than the other. So, um, uh, like if somebody with um, Alzheimer's or Parkinson's or all that, you know, are asking me about which what should they use which which products should they use first of all i tell them they need to get their doctor involved <laughs> anybody who's elderly or has a medical condition um needs to get their doctor involved because uh there are a lot of uh, minerals there sodium potassium uh, calcium magnesium in the ketone salt products and if somebody for example is on a water pill and losing sodium and maybe taking potassium uh, their doctor needs to know that because adjustments might need to be made. Um, some people with blood pressure problems uh, might need to have their blood pressure monitored more often, that type of thing. So, uh, and then, you know, I, I also recommend um, introducing it slowly for anybody with a medical condition. Just maybe start with a couple level teaspoons and increase it as tolerated. But most healthy, normal people should be able to tolerate ketone salts. So, um, so anyway, um, you know, uh, Steve uh, ended up ultimately losing his battle with Alzheimer's about eight years after he started the coconut oil, I'm very sad to report. Um, however, we felt like we got at least three more good years that were better than the year before he started coconut oil. Um, so, uh, <laughs> That is uh, my story and how I got involved. Um, and so back in January of 20, uh, let's see, 2016, yes, um, I spoke at a conference at University of South Florida, um, Metabolic Therapeutics uh, um, Conference on Nutritional Ketosis. And Prove It was just getting up and running and they had an exhibit there and I got to try Keto Cream, which I believe was the first product they came out with. And um, several months later, I was contacted by them asking me if I would like to speak at one of the Prove It events. 
And uh, so uh, at the end of, of, of May in 2016, I was able to do this. And so I um, came to the event. I was just flabbergasted by the hundreds of people sitting there who were now messengers for ketones. Um, back in 2008, um, I was compelled to, to be a messenger for ketones. And I, I started writing. I started... Um, I wrote an article that I got out on the internet, and um, then I ended up writing a book about it. Um, and now I've written another book about it. <laughs> so, um, I, but I felt like a lonely messenger because it really took a long time to get attention for this. And I tried really hard. I talked, I, I sent letters to politicians, to media, to Alzheimer's Association, to everybody I could think of, you know, to try to get this message out. But at the end of May, at the Prove It event, here were hundreds of people who were uh, promoting um, beta-hydroxybutyrate, the ketone, now in the form of ketone salts. And I talked to many people there and, and also listened to testimonials um, at the event. And so many people have benefited in so many ways from this, uh, with increased mental clarity um, and focus, uh, better sleep, and... Uh, just a multitude of um, of improvements, um, less aches and pains. Um, that probably has to do with the anti-inflammatory effect of ketones. So not only is it an alternative fuel for the brain, but ketones are anti-inflammatory. They they basically draw you know uh, connect in uh, chemical pathways that help reduce inflammation. So um, that. If you feel like you have less aches and pains while you're taking this, there's a, actually um, a, a scientific reason why that could be happening. Um, I, I went back to, I was invited again to speak at an event at the end of June in 2016. And between those two events, I talked to so many people who had lost a lot of fat. <laughs> they had lost anywhere, you know, I, I mean, up, upwards of 40 to 60 pounds just since January taking the product. And, and um, that connected with me personally, um, besides what happened with my husband, because, you know, I've been on a diet since I was eight years old. I um, <laughs> am like a yo-yo where I've been up and down uh, rather significantly, uh, very, you know, really quite heavy. Um, and so I thought, well, maybe, you know, I wonder what this can do for me. So I decided to start taking the keto, ketone salts. It was keto OS at the time. Um, sometimes I took the orange. Sometimes I took the, um, the chocolate swirl. Um, one of the things I like about the orange is that it has some of that MCT oil. And it may actually help, you know, increase, you know, raise ketone levels even higher than if you just took MCT oil. It, it can get it up there pretty well. Um, but the chocolate dream or chocolate swirl, it has um, branch chain amino acids uh, that also convert to ketones. So um, either product, you know, will help support um, increasing ketone levels. So that's where I started. And um, I had had trouble losing more than three or four pounds uh, when I, every time, a number of times that I had tried losing weight over the, um, the last few years. And um, so <laughs> Dustin Schaefer helped me. Um, I thank him for that. And he suggested trying keto cream for breakfast. And, and I'm a big breakfast eater. You know, my whole life, I, you know, wake up hungry and I want to eat breakfast. And he said, well, just have coffee with keto cream and then wait till you get hungry again. Well, to my disbelief, I... Um, found that I could go three or four hours before I started getting uh, hungry. And so by that time, it's almost lunch. So basically, I would have a late, a late uh, brunch or <laughs> early lunch and um, eat protein and vegetables. And I like coconut oil a lot So uh, and MCT oil. So I kind of mix coconut and MCT oil, use it a little bit as a salad dressing. Um, I uh, cook with coconut oil. So... Uh, like I might make a, a veggie omelet in, with uh, using coconut oil to cook it in, you know, that type of thing. And then uh, I would have my keto OS in the afternoon, early, around like 1 or 2 o'clock. And um, one of the other cool things about ketones is that they have been shown to suppress the appetite. 
Um, it's not known exactly how that happens, but it, it's believed that it, it has to do with um, hormones in the brain, the center that, that tells you whether you're uh, hungry or full, the certain hormones involved in that, and that the ketones may have um, some effect on those hormones. So I found for me, it really did suppress my appetite. Um, and so uh, I would drink keto in the afternoon and then have a dinner. Uh, again, some type of protein and vegetables and usually some coconut oil. And then late in the evening, I might have some key, you know, coconut milk, which also is very low in carbs and high in fat and get more coconut oil in that way. Um, so basically, you know, effectively um, putting myself on a ketogenic diet uh, supported by, you know, this nutritional supplement, these ketone salts. So um, the first week I blew through my record <laughs> from when I was much younger of losing seven pounds in a week. This time I lost eight pounds. I've never lost that much before in a, in a given uh, attempt. And um, 